Hi guys, welcome to the video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions. And in this video, I'm gonna be comparing three access points which you might wanna use in your home or small office. These are three access points that we use all the time and I can tell you they're all very good. But basically, I'm just gonna make some comparisons between them to help you understand which one would be best for you. So firstly, let's just give you a very brief overview on each access point I've got here. So the first one is uh, Ubiquiti's Unify U6 Plus. This is a relatively new access point. It kind of surpasses the uh, U6 Lite. Um, it's a two times two uh, Wi-Fi six access point, but we'll get into more detail on that in a moment. The next one is TP-Link Armada's EAP610. Um, again, two times two Wi-Fi six access point. And the last one is an Aruba incident on AP22. Uh, again, two times two Wi-Fi six access point. Right, so let's get into the specs. Okay, so let's go through the specs. So the first row is basically the number of radios. So we've got two times two MIMO on all three access points, which is why this is a good comparison. And that basically means that they've got uh, two radios of 2.4 gigahertz and two radios of five gigahertz. And that's Wi-Fi six on all of them. Okay, covered the number of radios. Now we're looking at recommended number of users. And you'll notice that the manufacturers recommend quite a wildly different number on these uh, recommended number of users. I think basically Ubiquiti are being a little bit optimistic here. Um, I think the Aruba figure is a little bit more realistic. I would be a bit worried about having 300 users on a single access point. Okay, so antenna gain. With a high antenna gain, you can get higher speeds because the antenna is more directed. However, that then means that it's not as well spread. So you wanna be somewhere in the middle here. Okay, maximum PRE draw. I'm not gonna go too much into PRE, but Essentially, if you have a PRE switch that is able to provide 40 watts of power and you put four of the EAP610s on it, then those access points are gonna potentially be drawing more power than the PRE switch is able to provide and therefore they won't function correctly. So you have to use these figures to plan your PRE budget. So if you can't use PoE and you wanna use um, a PSU or basically an alternative power supply, um, then you can do that with the Aruba and with the EOP610, but you can't do it with the U6 Plus. Okay, so now we've done the specs, let's take a look at them and uh, talk about some of the installation factors, etc. So this is the U6 Plus, first of all, it's a very nice looking access point. Um, you can tell that the founder of Ubiquiti came from Apple. It feels like an Apple product, it looks very pretty. Um, the thing I really like about this access point is the way it kind of sits on the ceiling. So it's, it's a flush mounted access point, which means that it sits right up on the ceiling. The cable is hidden in here, it's concealed. So it sort of bends in and goes into, uh, into the gigabit ethernet port here. There's not much else on this access point except a reset button. Um, and it, like I said, it just slips up onto the ceiling or you can put it on the wall. It's got a nice blue um, LED ring light around here when, um, when it's up online. Um, the other nice thing about it as well is the brackets that the U6 Lite uses are the same ones that we used for the Lite 6, uh, the AC Lite and the HD Nano. So it's very easy to swap these out. So if you're say upgrading from an AC Lite to a U6 Plus, you can literally just take the access point down, put in a new one, you don't need to change the bracket or anything. So that's another little nice thing about Ubiquiti. I would say, from my perspective, Ubiquiti is the nicest looking product. It's very easy to install, but none of these are difficult to install in fairness, but I'll just go through some of the other considerations. You can also see, as I've got them side on here, that Ubiquiti one's quite a lot uh, lower in its profile than the other two, uh, particularly the Ruber. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so this is TB-Link EAP610. Um, it's quite nice looking design, really. It's almost identical. In fact, it is identical in this size to the U6 Plus, um, but it's a bit, a bit deeper um, and the other thing about it is it's um, it's got a slightly different bracket so it's got this metal bracket so it's pretty sturdy um, it's quite good this bracket because it's got lots of screwing options and these two screws here in the center so this one and this one they can be used to fix it to a, like a back box so you can actually have this screwed to a um, like a, a back box on a wall if you want to it does work quite nicely like that um, and it's got a bit of a guide on, on exactly what you can use it for on the front there as well. So that's quite sturdy. I quite like the new, uh, the new mounts, much better than the old ones. I think the, uh, the Wi-Fi 6 models of these are much better looking than the previous generation of Wi-Fi 5 models and they feel more sturdy, heavier, etc. cetera. Um, the only thing I don't love about these access points is that the cable comes here at the side, but that's not concealed like it is on 
uh, on the Ubiquiti. So um, if you kind of have a so side profile look at this access point, you can see the cable coming in. I just prefer a design where it's just completely cut off. That's really only gonna matter in residential um, situations. In, in business, that won't matter. And to be honest, you can kind of turn it so that the cable entry is, you know, is not visible. Probably just me being a little bit pedantic, but I do prefer the uh, kind of way that the cable's hidden on this one. So now we come on to the uh, Aruba AP22. It's a really nice looking access point. Obviously it's more of a sort of rounded square than a circle. It's got two little LED status lights on the, on the bottom here. Um, its mount is slightly different to the others in the fact that it is not particularly flush. So this is the one thing I really don't love about the Aruba. So you've got the sort of bottom there and you put the mount on like that. And then when it sits on a ceiling, that's quite a big gap off the ceiling. So you can see that it kind of hangs quite low off the mount. So you can see all of this and you can kind of see the mount as well. And the cable is here on the side which means it's very visible. Um, so just from my perspective, I don't love the way this ceiling mounts. Now it is possible to get like a kind of bracket that goes around it, uh, around the outside to cover all that, but then it just makes the whole thing look pretty chunky. Again, this is probably only a consideration in a domestic uh, setting, but uh, certainly from my perspective, I prefer to have a kind of much more slicker looking device over here. That's just on the aesthetic side, so we'll go into some of the other things in a moment. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about software. I'm not going to go through the setup of these devices, um, but we have got videos on these two and I'll just put links up in the corner to those now so you can see how to set those up. Um, there's some slight differences in the way they set up and I think it will depend how many access points you're going to be using and how complicated your setup needs to be and which one is kind of favourable in, uh, in this situation. So I'll start with these two. Uh, that's the Ubiquiti and the TP Link. These are a little bit more complicated in their setup in the fact that you can set them up with a mobile phone. So you can set them up in what's called standalone mode with a mobile phone app. Um, it's very simple to do, it doesn't take very long at all. Um, but that means that you're effectively just setting them up and that's it. They're like, they're good to go and they work perfectly, but they're not kind of, they're not particularly smart. They're just kind of doing what you've told them to do and that's pretty much it. If you want them to be a little bit more intelligent than that, if you want them to be part of a sort of uh, a wider controlled network, then you need to use controller software. Now controller software is free. It, you can get it uh, for a laptop or a PC, Raspberry Pi, NAS Drive, anything like that for both these brands. Um, however, uh, you need to kind of have a little bit, little bit more technical knowledge on using that. Um, and then once you've got it kind of set up, you can get more features out of these access points. The other way of doing it is by using a hardware controller of some form. So in Ubiquiti's uh, previous kind of generation of models, they were leaning more towards a cloud key, which is effectively a little computer that runs the controller software all the time and it just sits on the network. They moved away from that now really and they're mainly focusing on console based software. So that means you buy a device like a Dream Router, which is basically like a router with some software, with the controller software uh, in, in it. Uh, there's also the Dream Machine and the Dream Machine uh, Special Edition. And effectively that allows you to manage this access point. But it is another bit of equipment and it's not overly cheap. So if you're just planning on deploying like one access point, then using standalone mode is going to be a much easier way of doing it. But again, you just don't get those full features. So that's the uh, Ubiquiti. tb link Commander is almost identical. The software is very similar. Um, however, they don't, they, well actually they do, they have one three-in-one router and then they have little uh, hardware controllers which are effectively the same thing as the cloud keys. They're basically little computers that run uh, the software and it just sits on your network all the time. Very easy to set up, but another bit of kit that you need to buy. It's not overly expensive actually for the uh, hardware controller, but it is another bit of kit you need to buy. So if you are looking for a really simple setup, you can set these up in standalone mode. So this is where I would say the Aruba does a bit better. Aruba is a different kind of setup. So if you want like one or two access points in your home or business, then the Aruba allows you to set them up on their app, but it's using their cloud uh, based controllers basically. So they've got their own software that you set it all up on and then it's kind of a centrally managed system controlled through Aruba's cloud software. And they've got millions of devices on that now. I can't remember the figure they've reached, but it's, it's a lot of devices on there. And it just gives you a little bit more um, 
ability, the device a little bit more ability. Um, it means it's kind of can be updated automatically. It means that it can do, uh, you know, it's aware of other access points in its network, etc. And you don't have to do anything other than buying the access point, as in you just you just get the app for free and it's it's free use. The only thing I would say is that if you want to do a larger deployment, so if you're planning on putting in lots of these access points, then you probably would say there's not enough features on Aruba. So maybe if you're looking for more complex stuff, then Aruba hasn't quite got the uh, the number of uh, configurable sort of uh, variables that these other two access points have on their controller software. So this is probably more for a kind of smaller deployment. But in fairness, that's exactly what Aruba market is. This is their instant on, so it's their lighter range. Um, it's designed for small business. It's not really designed for domestic, but it does work really well in domestic. So uh, that's the kind of difference in the software. I'm sorry if that's a little bit too complicated, but hopefully I've made that sort of fairly simple. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to some other considerations with these access points. Um, primarily, we install Ubiquity. So most of the time, most of my experience comes from Ubiquity. Not so much this model, actually, we've probably only installed a couple of hundred of these just because uh, it's a fairly new model, but we are getting to know this one pretty well. Um, but certainly previous uh, Ubiquity models and Pro 6s, etc. et cetera. Um, I really like these models. I would say we've, we've installed thousands. We've probably had 10 fail. Um, so a very, very small percentage. Some of those may be for external reasons as well, um, but with a very reliable device and they hardly ever go wrong and really, really good, will work for years and years and years until basically the technology is surpassed. So a very reliable device. However, the warranty on these devices is only 12 months, so it's pretty short. Um, they do offer an extended warranty, but on the sort of cheaper access points like this, it's not really gonna be worth it. The RMA process as well, which is a returns process, is a little bit long-winded and it takes a long time to get replacement. Um, for us in the UK, it effectively has to go back to um, Eastern Europe and then get shipped back out to us. We've currently got a um, Pro 6 that's gone back on RMA and that's taken, I think we're at about five weeks now and we still haven't got that access point back. So it is a very slow process. So the kind of return side is a little bit painful and a little bit short. So that is a consideration for Ubiquiti. But like I say, normally a very, very reliable product. Um, the other thing to consider about Ubiquiti is their support. Their support is primarily community based, which means it's all, uh, you know, other users helping each other out. Um, so if you're kind of tech savvy and happy to look in those kind of communities, then you'll find your information fairly quickly. It's quite easy to find information. Sometimes a little bit out of date, obviously as changes uh, in firmware, etc., happen, but mostly it's pretty good. If you are looking for direct support from Ubiquiti, then it is possible you can open a support ticket with them but those support tickets are fairly slow to be responded to. I find they're not always responded to. I also find that that advice given is not always particularly helpful. Um, we, in fact, I don't think we've really ever solved an issue from Ubiquiti support. I think we've always had to sort of find our own way around it. So um, that, that would be my only consideration with Ubiquiti. Other than that, it's an excellent product. Interface are very good, software is brilliant. So consideration of Ubiquiti. TP-Link's got much longer warranty on it, as we saw. Um, the uh, support from TP-Link's pretty good. We haven't had really much in the way of sort of consumer direct support. Um, I've never had an access point fail, but in fairness Ubiquiti, we have installed far, far more Ubiquiti than we have TP-Link. So um, it might be that we've just, you know, we've just been lucky. Um, we've probably installed a few hundred of these rather than the sort of thousands that we install the Ubiquiti devices. So it's it seems to be pretty solid. They don't fail as far as we've seen, but they have got that long warranty if they do fail. And I believe the returns process is really simple. I think it's all UK based, so we can get that uh, pretty quick, but I haven't actually got an experience of it to give you on that side. Customer support, I believe is pretty responsive. We've, we do it through our channel partner, so it's slightly different. So we, we go sort of through uh, the wholesale suppliers. Um, and the one time that we have had a problem with with TP Link, not relating to an access point, relating to something completely different, they were very very good. Um, they got a uh, video call put together in a couple of days, and we um, we had a sort of you know a real meeting with them. Turned out just to be a firmware issue. They sent us a new upgraded version of the firmware, and it was all resolved pretty quickly. So from my point of view, I found TP Link Commander support to be very good, but slightly different to the normal consumer level. Right. Finally, we go to Ruba. I've never, oh no, I've had one Aruba fail. I've had one Aruba fail. Um, it may have been because it was dropped. 
um, the client was a little bit cagey about why it was broken and I suspect it was dropped but the otherwise they've been very reliable never had an issue with any of them we again haven't installed anywhere near as many as we have installed the ubiquity but overall the impression is pretty good when we did get that RMA that we had to send it back um, they had an ex, a new one out to us within within 24 hours so it was it was very very quick so the support from these guys has been excellent um, so yeah definitely a kind of a big bonus for these guys I also know that support is good with these guys they will come back to you really quickly they've got a kind of chat and that's primarily because these two companies, Aruba and TP-Link are big companies. Ubiquiti is a much smaller company. And one of the ways that they keep their pricing down is by kind of reducing that kind of customer support and things like that. So, you know, if you want the product to stay cheap, then you've got to, you've got to take some sacrifices. So these guys are able to do it because they've got much larger companies. So that's uh, some other considerations. Uh, I think overall, there's not much more to say about these products. So what I will do is we'll do our sort of setup. I'm going to set all three of these up. And then I'm just going to do a pretty basic crude um, out the box speed test. So we're just going to put them in their uh, default settings, apply the speed test and see how we get on. Not entirely fair, but it will give you some indication of what kind of Wi-Fi performance you can expect as an amateur, just setting them up on a, on a mobile app. OK, so now we're on to the speed test. The speed tests were pretty crude. As I said, I basically took the access point, set it up put it in the same place for all of them. It's connected to a PoE switch. I've got a 900 up, 900 down connection here. Um, I turned off the 2.4, so we were just focusing on the five gigahertz to give them all a fair chance. And that was about it. I did three speed tests per access point, and I'm showing you the results of the best one of those three to make it fair. Okay, so the first one was the TP-Link. TP-Link actually did really well. It managed to get 627 on the download and 682 on the upload. So that's pretty quick. And I've made no changes there. That's just straight out of the box. Set it up and that's uh, connected and that was it. The next one was the Aruba. Aruba, similar speeds, uh, 664 on the download. So a little bit quicker than TP-Link and 497 on the upload. So a little bit slower. I suspect we might have been able to get a little bit more out of that. Um, if we tried a few more speed tests. The one that was a little bit disappointing was the Unify. The Unify I did actually did four speed tests because I was trying to give it an additional bit of chance, but it just couldn't get past these speeds. It was about 406 on the download and 355 on the upload. Now I must stress that in normal circumstances, we would play around with this until we could get a better speed, increase the uh, channel width, etc., maybe move the channels around. Um, however, out of the box, these are the results. So I think that's a fair comparison. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's the end of the video. I hope that I've given you enough information for you to make a decision on which access point is best for you. As I said, they're all excellent products and you can't go far wrong with any of them. Thanks very much for watching the video. Please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.